So this kind of reviews last time a little bit. Uh, we talked about how area can be thought of as the number of squares that fit inside a shape. We talked about other shapes, right? Yes. And other than squares, what else could we use? Triangles. Triangles would work. They fit together with no gaps. Rectangles would work. Trapezoids. Trapezoids. Diamonds. Diamonds would work. Pentagons? No. Pentagons, they don't no. fit together. Well. Rhombus? What's that? Rhombus? Yeah, those would work. I thought you said rhombus. What about yeah, hexagons? Talk about hexagons. How uh, hexagons would work. Right? Yeah. Circles? No. no. Not a good idea. They do not fit together very well. Uh, octagons? No. No, those do not work very well. So we settle on squares because they're as simple as it gets, right? They're yeah. uniform, 90 degrees on all sides. All sides are the same. Uh, why not? I mean, why would we want to mess around with hexagons, right? It's kind of hard to figure out how many hexagons fit in a place. Squares make it really easy to, to calculate how many fit in a certain place. Right? We talked about with rectangles how, well, we don't really need to come in here and draw a square, right? And draw another square. And draw another. You don't have to do that, right? Yeah. It's just more time than we need. We talked about how we could we could just put squares along this side and along this side. And then multiply. And then multiply because I know that there's room enough this direction for five to fit. And there's enough room for three squares. That means that there's a room enough for three rows of five squares. Three times five is fifteen, right? So fifteen is the area. Yeah. And for any rectangle, now we can just figure out how many squares fit along this side, how many squares fit along this side. Multiply those two numbers together. Can we get the square all area in? So, what do you mean, like, I have to square 15? Well, let's, let's ask that question. The area is the number of squares that fit, right? How many can I fit in there? That's how I can put a number to that idea of, like, how much space something takes up. Okay? How many squares fit in this rectangle? 15. 15. So should I square 15 to figure out how many squares fit in here? No. No, no because yeah. that's how many squares fit. Yeah. 15 squares fit. Mm -hmm. Should I square the number of squares? No. Mm -hmm. No. Because then. But there's no, it's not for no reason that this notion of a square is in your head, right? It's there for some reason. We think about areas, we think about squares. And but you're kind of jumbling stuff up in your head. So, what about this is square? Squares. The squares are square. That's why the word square is in your head, because those shapes are squares. Okay. Uh, that being said, though, when we do areas, there is a little square somewhere in there, right? There's something that is square. But it's not the number of squares, right? Because once you know the number of squares, you know the area. It's done. Once you know 15, is 15 squares fit, that's what the area is. But something is squared. What is squared about area? Something is squared, but it's not the number of squares. The number of squares is the area, yeah? Isn't that the answer to What do you mean by the answer? Like when you do Well, again, area is the number of squares. How many squares fit in this rectangle? 15. 15. 15. So do I need to square it? Take 15, right? Area is equal to 15 squared? 15 squared is a number. 15, what does it mean to square like something? 15 times 15. 15 times 15, that's 225, if I'm not mistaken. Is the area of this thing 225? No. No, no because the area is what? 15. Yeah, this is the number of squares that fit. Could two, 225 squares fit? Sure, if we made squares small enough. But not squares this size. Okay, We're talking about squares this size. But again, there is something about area that is squared. But it's not the number of squares that you square. What is squared? What did you say? Uh, what's
What's square about area? The squares. The squares. The that must be where it comes from, right? No, Mr. Dolly told us to square all area answers. Yeah. I'm sure he did not tell you to take 15 and square it. He's an intelligent guy. He wouldn't have told you that. But there is something square. There's a little 2 in the exponent somewhere, but it's not squaring the number of squares. Squaring the actual area. Area of stuff is measured with squares. That's where the square comes from. Here's what's square. I'll just tell you. These squares, right? That's where the yeah. square is coming from. Something is squared about this square. Okay. <laughs> this square, if I were to pull it over to the side, the sides are the same. That's what a square is. Okay. This side, how long is this side? Say we don't know. Three inches. Say we don't know. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Nobody said. But it measures something, right? Uh -huh. Let's say it's a mile. It's one mile. Could it be two miles? Sure, why not? Well, why not? I don't know. That's a really short mile. It doesn't matter. Why shouldn't I measure a square? In, why should I measure one mile by one mile instead of two miles by two miles? Well, if they're the same, why not two and two? Well, let's, let's say it's confusing because then each square is actually four square miles. It's just weird. Anyway, one mile by one mile. Okay. What are the units that I'm using to measure this side? What are the units I'm using to measure this side? Mile. Mile. Miles by miles. Okay. What's the area inside of the square? One. One by one. But is it one mile? No. No. Two miles? Four. No, four. Four, 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 four miles. miles. Four miles. The area is four miles squared. I'm so confused. <laughs> one There's one mile. This is all this is area. I'll ask him. I'm sure he'll tell you that. Tell me that you did not. He did not tell you to square all. He said probably. Well, when we get done here, you'll know what he's actually told you and what you mistakenly remember. Okay? Or is it one mile squared? Right. So it's. One, right? Because how many squares, we're saying area is the number of squares. How many squares fit in one square? One. One. Right? But one what? It's not one mile, because a mile is from here to there. Another mile is from here to there. Inside of that area, it's not a mile. It's not a length. It's not a distance. It's a square that's a mile on both sides. So we call it a square mile or a mile squared. Right? One mile square. That's, That's what this is. Or one foot square. So inch, whatever. I'm square. Blew my mind. What are you confused about? Mike, uh, the whole thing. Right. Yeah. What whole thing? One. Well, like, <laughs> so if you have like one mile, so it's like two miles, so you take like that one mile. We should be all listening to Sid right now. And then the mile on the side. Yeah. And so then that equals two. Like, if you add them. No, like when you squared, you said mile squared. Right. Basically because we kind of we have to come up with a name for, like we have a name for how long this side is. We have a name for how long this side is. Right? We're measuring lengths. Like with a ruler, I can measure the length of things. But length and area are different things. Right? It's like perimeter and area are different things. Perimeter is a me me uh, measurement of length. But the area is the number of squares that fit in a space. Right? Here, 15 of them fit, 15 squares. Right? Kind of an obvious answer. Inside of one square, one square can fit. The area of this is one square. This side's one, this side's one, base time side we talked about. One times one is one. One what? Square. Square. One square. Not one mile mile is not one uh, gallon and oh. not one uh, cubic foot. It's one square. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just one square. This is one square. Here's one square. There's another square. One square, one square, one square, one square, one square. Okay. So the area of this square is one square. Right? The area of, if I block this off, is just 
two, right? Just right there is just two. The area of this whole thing, how many squares fit inside of it? 15. So the area is 15. But when we just say 15, 15, we don't have anything to call it. 15 arbitrary squares. Okay. You don't know what arbitrary means? No. Arbitrary means like not specific. Oh. Okay. Meaningless. That makes a little bit more sense now. Cool? So it's like 15 squares, basically? Yes. So two it's squares? What are you saying, two? No, like, like square, then it just means 15 squares. 15 squares. Okay. The square part of it is just saying what there's 15 of. It's not telling you to square 15. The ice cream special for all freshmen will begin in the gym four year in two minutes. The ice cream you know, the ice special for all freshmen will begin. So, what, what Cole just said is very important and significant and profound, and you should pay attention to it and always remember it. This area is just 15 square things, okay? Just 15 squares. That's the square that you keep thinking of. It's not 15 squared, 15 times 15. It's just 15 squares. Sid? You got a look on your face. You got a question that you're not asking. You got to ask that question. So if you took, said you took like five times five and that equals 15. No, five times five is not 15. Are we, are we? Yeah, like five times three. Five times three, yes, yeah. it's 15. So we did that. Yeah. So it would just be squares, not like squares. Right. Okay, and then you squared, you squared the miles, but you know, you See, here's, here's the area. If, if this square is a mile on one side and a mile on the other, then the area of this whole thing, since 15 of those fit, is 15 miles squared. But the thing that people confuse is they forget about the miles, they hear 15 and squared, and they square 15. Okay. In another class, I had somebody say, well, don't you take the 15 and multiply it by 2, or don't you take the 15 and multiply it by 4, because every square has four sides? See how confused we can sound at different times? Okay. You're confused because you remember that there's a square. Other guy's confused because there's like two sides that we're talking about. Somebody else is confused because squares have four sides, so shouldn't you take 15 and multiply by four? Should you take 15 and multiply by four to find the area of this, square, of this rectangle? No. No, what's the area of this rectangle? 15. Why 15? Because three squares are six. Yes, I love that you did not say because three times five. No, because 15 squares fit in this rectangle. Okay? Oh, yeah, I So if you know that 15 squares fit in this rectangle, you're doing great. The thing I'm trying to do, trying to help you with, is clear up this confusion about square. The reason why it's called square is because it's a square, right? It's a mile squared because it's a mile by a mile, okay? It is, strange as it might seem, it's a mile times a mile. Not just one times one, but one mile times a mile. So the square, what do you call a mile squared? We did square, and we multiplied a mile by itself, okay? It's kind of a weird thing. Like, you don't normally multiply things by themselves. So you don't multiply an eraser times an eraser. What does that mean? Two erasers. One eraser. Ugh. An eraser times an eraser. What is that new thing? Well, how many erasers are there? Erasers. One eraser times one eraser. One. One, one, one eraser. One, one eraser, squared. eraser squared. One eraser squared. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, how do I think this eraser, which is not a square, it is a three-dimensional object. One rectangle squared. And then if I say <laughs> if it's, a, if it's a eraser squared, How's it an eraser squared? A square is a two-dimensional object. You see what I'm saying? Multiplying a cube thing by itself is, is a weird thing. Right. Rectangle squared. No, rectangled rectangle. <laughs> if you're trying to figure out what an eraser squared is, don't bother. I'm asking a nonsense question. Oh, okay. An eraser squared doesn't make any sense. But as odd as it seems to multiply a thing by itself, if we think about it in terms of miles, distances, then a, a mile squared just means a square that is a mile on all sides. And that's all this means. That right there just means we're talking about a mile, a square that is a mile on all sides. That's what a mile squared is. Does that mean take 15 and multiply it by itself? Okay. These are just the units. What's the area of this thing? Why? Because there's 15 squares. 15 squares fit. And that, so that's done. We got it. This is the part that's confusing you about squaring. Okay? What's being squared? A mile's being squared. Okay? 
One mile squared is a square that is a mile on all sides. What's 15 miles squared? It's 15 of those squares. <coughs> 15 of those squares. Okay? So if I can figure out how many squares fit in a rectangle, should I square that number? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. How many squares fit in this rectangle? 15. 15. So then I take 15 and multiply by itself? No. 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 That's what yeah. A2 is. Cool. It doesn't even mean anything. Multiplying 15 by itself in that context doesn't mean a thing. Why would I multiply 15 by itself? 15 times 15? Why would I? Because You've got to remember, this is the difference between understanding what we're actually looking for and memorizing math. Memorizing math? I don't want you to take a look at your brains. Say that's your brain. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's got like little lobes and stuff. This is not completely scientifically accurate, obviously. But let's say the memory part of your brain is like right there. It's so small. It's, just, it's literally a small part of your brain is, it, it is its job to remember things. Just by pure remembering. Like remembering that. Uh, right. uh, remembering like a fact. What's a fact that you know? Yeah? Like, doesn't have to be a math fact. Any fact at all. Olivia's got a fact. She's ready. Some oxen have pink milk. Some oxen <laughs> have pink milk. What? Okay. Where do you use that? Now, Olivia, how do you know that? You heard it somewhere, it's stuck in your brain, you're remembering it. Yeah. It's in this part of your brain. Yeah. This part of your brain is weird, it's erratic, it remembers things you don't want it to remember, it doesn't remember things that you do want it to remember. Okay? I know, I remember tons of things that are completely useless, like lines to movies, and all sorts of things. I don't know why I remember them, I just remember them. And then there are other things that I try to remember, and then there are things that I want to remember that I forget. This is a really crummy, part of your brain to store knowledge. See what I'm saying? You put things in there, it does not work very well, because what is, your brain is meant to take information in, you remember it in your short-term memory, but then there's gotta be some way to move it into your long-term memory, okay? And just remembering facts like formulas, like there, there's a square somewhere in, somewhere in there, right? You're using this tiny part of your brain. Use a bigger part of your brain. The part of your brain that's long-term memory that uses reasoning and understanding. Okay? So, let's, again, talk about area. What is area? No. Number of squares that can, now it could be hexagons, could be circles, right? We're going to say squares. Number of squares that can sit, fit inside of a shape. Agreed? Yeah. And always go back to that. Okay? Those are mathematicians, too. They define things, and they always go back to those definitions. So, number of squares that can fit. So what is the area of this rectangle? 15. 15 squares. Because 15 squares, 15 squares fit. Not because 5 times 3, okay? But because 15 squares fit in there, we can see it. We can calculate it as well, right? We know that if this side's 5, this side's 3, then 5 times 3, I know that there's room for 15 squares. Here's the part where you get confused. 15, that's it. That's the area. 15. Not 15 squared. We're not going to square 15. <laughs> Right? Because what's area? Fifth. Number of squares. What's the area of this rectangle? Fifteen. Why? Because that's where fifteen squares fit. So should I square fifteen? No, fifteen times fifteen. Let's tell me what that number is. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Two twenty-five. I thought it was two twenty-five. What in the world? Scientific calculator. Very beautiful. Fifteen squared. There we go. Two twenty-five. Okay. That's an intense calculator. Now. It's 225. Is the area of this thing 225? Nope. No. 15. 15. It's 15. We already knew that. So why would I multiply 15 by itself? Once I know how many squares fit, I know the area. No need to multiply that number by itself, arbitrarily, for no reason. Okay. The square part of it is that the units are miles squared. Squares that are a mile on every side. That's it. It's not instructions saying multiply 15 by itself. It's just units. Miles squared. Squares that are miles on, either, on every side. Okay? Have I cleared that up? Okay? When we know how many squares fit in a, in a space, what do we know about it? 
that that is the area. That's how many squares fit. Whether it be 15 or 18 or 27 or 13 and a half, whatever the area is, it is a measurement of the number of squares that fit. How big those squares are, that's what this is telling. There are squares that are a mile on every side. There are squares that are an inch on every side. There are squares that are a foot on every side. Whatever that is squared, it's just a bunch of squares that are whatever on every side. Squares the same on every side. All right? You've done well. <laughs> If, if we ever could unconfuse ourselves, then that is a successful day. No mapping is necessary. Okay. Now let's look at a triangle, which is hard to tell where all the squares are going to fit. Because if I, if I just start taking squares like this, maybe it's a half, but if you can look up here, this line doesn't quite go right through that quarter of the square, so it's not quite half a square, so it's like quarter. I don't know, like fifty-one percent of a square. It's not a quarter. Not true. It's almost a half. Just that, that that part that's left out is just a little bit more than half. And the part that's inside the triangle is a little less than half. So maybe like forty-eight percent of the square. We're guessing or we're gonna have to get really good instruments to measure all of this, and it seems like this probably isn't the best way to do it. No. Is there a way for the media that we can calculate this? Okay. Is there a way that we can take certain measurements and calculate how, how much room there is for squares? Probably there is. But let's, let's figure out how. So, does anybody have any ideas on how we can take this triangle? And, well, can you take this triangle, maybe cut it up, make copies, spin it around, rotate it, move it around or anything, to turn it into more of a rectangular shape so that we can do this times that. Because yes. right? this times that, the base times the height, is just because we know that this many squares can fit along here, this many squares can fit along here, so I know there's enough room of for three rows of five squares. Can we do that? Yes. How can we do that? How can we mess around with it and, and do it that way, yeah. Uh, you could uh, duplicate another one of those. Okay, let's duplicate it. Uh, connect it. And then, and then connect it to the thing. Rotate it. Rotate it? Uh, keep going. Keep it going. Keep yeah, keep going. going. Keep it going. Yeah, like that. Right, basically right there. Like that? Um, and then down. move it down. down. Like this? Down. No. Yeah. Sure. No. No. Uh-uh. Or down yeah. here. That right there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. What does that do? No. It makes a square. It makes a square. It's not rotated. No, it makes a rectangle. Makes a Remember, a square is the same on every side. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear this is not the same on every side. It's rectangular. Is it a rectangle? Yes. Yes. A rectangle has 90 degrees. No, 90 yeah. degrees everywhere. Does this look like 90 degrees too? Oh, I know. Rotate the top one. Just, right. just the top one? Yeah, just a little. The other no, way. No. The other way, keep going. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. And then, yeah, take the bottom one and rotate that. Like this? Like, okay, so take the top one and put the flat edge straight. So, kind of back from the way it was? No. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. No. Keep going. Like this? What are you talking no. about? <laughs> Make, no, the back, the back edge is facing the bottom. Make it straight. This straight up and down or straight yeah. up and down? James, just go do it. Oh, you go do it. <laughs> like this? Yeah, like that. And then put the other one, like rotate it to where you can. Do move now. And put it. Does that make it a rectangle? Dang it. I told you. Okay, now I'll rotate the whole. What the heck? <laughs> 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 rotate the whole thing? This. Stretch it out. Yeah. If you stretch it out, it would change what the triangle is. Uh, uh, now it's just an optical illusion. Maybe. Maybe. Keep going. 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 Keep
have a weird triangle. Here. <laughs> <laughs> or you, we can actually fit squares into that, maybe evenly. No. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of a tricky thing. Is that we still have that same problem. Like if, you, if you turn uh, the pivot. Turn the triangle or the squares? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I did that, but now it's hanging out of the bottom. Oh, oh mine. But it's the bottom. <laughs> that was the triangle there. Right, but that triangle, which I don't know how much of a square is that triangle. Oh, you can oh, put the God. small squares and then do it. No, yeah. you can't. I still have a gap there. Well, oh, never it. mind. <laughs> y it's still hanging out. Oh, my God. <laughs> the main problem we're having here is these do not meet at a 90 degree angle. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 How do you know that? How do you know that for sure? That's, that's what I just do. Okay. Moving beyond, I just know, and you're going to why I can be sure. I know. Triangle that happen, right? We could get two different triangles and then make it a square. Two different triangles? Yeah. What do you mean by that? You get four triangles. No. You get like a different type of triangle. Yeah, like a regular triangle. Yeah. I don't know the area of this triangle, but oh, that's okay. another triangle. Is <laughs> <laughs> it? What do we have now? A rectangle right. and a square. A rec what? How about if we just have a giant rectangle? That works. Whoa! Whoa! That would actually what? work. What? What? How do that? Actually, I'll wow. triangle. Oh. I'll outline the rectangle. We just got word in actuality, so here is a big rectangle. <laughs> that triangle that got There we go. Now. That works. Like, hold on. 
how does the area of this rectangle compare to the area of the original triangle? Well, here's the original triangle. Uh -huh. And what's this thing? Another triangle. triangle. How does it compare to this original triangle? Uh, it's upside down. Well, it's the same. <laughs> the same but upside down. It's exactly the same. What is the area? How do the areas of these two triangles compare? This one and this one? Which one has more area? This? They're, they're, they're both equal. They're the same because they're exact copies of each other. Okay. Well, let's see. This big rectangle is made of this part of this triangle, this part of this triangle, well, and, and this entire triangle, which is the same as the original, and this part of this other triangle. So the area of this rectangle, mm -hmm. how does it compare to the original triangle? It's the same. Because the triangle is not correct. How many triangles make up this rectangle? Two. Two. Two of the, well, okay, the number of triangles, but how many of the original triangles make up the big rectangle? Two. 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 One, and part of another one, and then the other part is over here now, but it's still the same area. It fills in this spot right here. Yeah. Okay? So this rectangle is how much of the original area of the triangle? All of it. All. Uh, no, twice, no, it's like a it's twice as much, because it's made of two of those triangles. Yes. Oh. Oh. Okay. Made of two of those triangles. So the area of the triangle is how much of this rectangle? Two. Two. The triangle is half the area of the rectangle. Now, also four. How do we measure the area? Or how do we calculate the area of this big rectangle now? Base times height. We've established this base times height thing. Okay. Let's look at this this triangle that's on top here. Here is the base, right? From here all the way to here. And the height is from here to here. That's the base and the measures of the base and the height of the rectangle, but the rectangle is twice as big as the triangle. So the area of the triangle is base times height. Base times height, but that's too much. Divided by two. Divided by two or times one half. Okay. And there's your one half base times height. You can make a rectangle that is clearly made of two of these triangles. Okay. If it's made of two of the triangles, it's just two times what we need. So we just look at half of that. We take the base of the triangle, multiply by the height. Okay. That's the area of this rectangle. But because that rectangle is made of two triangles, we know that what we need is just half of that. Base times height, half of that. Half of base times height. One half times base times height. And now this is it magic. It's not something you have to memorize. It's not something that has to live in this part of your brain where it's not really designed to be. It's designed to be in the rest of your brain that understands and processes and synthesizes information and actually understands things. Okay? See what I'm saying there? So we have a way. We can measure parts of a rectangle or sorry, triangle and know that, uh, well, two of those triangles fits in this rectangle that has the same base and height, so we just need a half of that. No, oh, base times height times one half. Okay. Following with me, you getting the idea of what we're doing here? We're gonna do this for other shapes. Okay, here we go, more shapes. Okay, parallelogram. Meaning that this and this side are the same in parallel, this side and this side are the same in parallel, but... You just chop it. Chop it? Yeah, like we did before. We just did it. We did just do it. We actually have. We made a parallelogram with two triangles. With two triangles. And we cut it. Now and then it's I cut it. Not two triangles, it's one parallelogram. Cut it. Yeah. You just cut it. So you cut this? Yeah. Not that way. Move it over there. Move it over here? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing then. Put it right there? Yeah. Well, it looks pretty deep. I thought it was like two. No, it looks pretty deep. It looks like a tent. So it just, it's just the same backwards. This, this triangle, you can just slide it over there, right? The angles are all the same, it matches up completely. This is a 90 degree angle. This, we cut it at a 90 degree angle, right? So this must be a 90 degree angle. It's a rectangle, right? How does this base of the rectangle compare to the base of the original parallelogram? We have a lot of time left. We don't need to be packing up yet. What? I'm just saying. What, how does the base from here to here on the rectangle compared to the base of the parallelogram. It's the same, isn't it? It's the 
this thing? Oh, it's a little longer. It's a little longer. It's like a half longer. Half longer? Yeah, uh -huh. it's, a little, it's a little longer. It's exactly. You say it's the same, Marcus? Yeah. Can you convince everybody this is the same? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you tell me. Uh, I know. Yeah? Just follow the line from that corner to that corner. From what corner to what corner? The bottom right hand corner. Here. No. Yeah. Here? Yeah. There up to the top corner. Just right up there and make two triangles? No. Yeah. How about this? Here's a part of the base of the parallelogram, right? There's part of it from here to here. And there's the rest of it. If I add those two together, I get this, the base of the entire base of the parallelogram. Mm, yeah. From here to here, let's say that's A. Okay. From here to here, let's say that's B. So I'll go to A and B? Yeah. yeah. Alright. So if I take A, which is from here to there. And I add B, do I get the base of the parallelogram? Oh, yeah. Okay. What if I just put B over here? It's the same. You know what I did? I just cut it and I yeah. moved it over there. Okay, so A plus B still is the same. It's the base. We can also look at the top here. Look, that's the same. And it goes just from one side of the rectangle all the way to the other. It's the same. Okay? So then the height of the parallelogram and this rectangle that we made, they're the the same, right? The height must be the same. Yeah. There. All right. So, what's the area of this rectangle? Uh, base times b. Or base times height. Base mm -hmm. times b was a bad choice, I guess, huh? Uh, it's got a and uh, c. Oh man, this guess is tough. So from here to there, that's the base of the rectangle, which is the same as the base of the parallelogram. Okay. The area of that rectangle is base times height. Is the area of this rectangle and the area of the parallelogram the same? No. So if it's not, then how much of it is like the parallelogram half of it? Or it's what? Uh. Remember what we did? We just cut this little piece off, moved it over here. Parallelogram is half. Look at the rectangle here. It's made a lot of, like, parallelogram makes up a lot of this rectangle, right? Yeah? Yeah. Except for this little guy right here. But what do we put here? What did we put right here? The piece from the this other piece, side. Right? Yeah. This little piece is the part that hangs out of the rectangle until we put it right there. Does it fill in this gap? Yes. So the area of the rectangle and the area of the parallelogram? Is it one? One square? We don't have a specific measurement. But Okay, let's just measure the area here and then put in a bunch of squares. Six. Okay. Uh -oh. Dang it. Look at this. Let's call it six. <laughs> 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 six by three. Eighteen. Okay. Yep. Now there's there's some squares that are gonna hang outside of the parallelogram, right? Yes. But they're filling in this triangle. Wouldn't the square also fill in this triangle? Yeah. Right? The area of the parallelogram and the area of that rectangle are what? 18. <gasps> They're both 18? Yeah. So the same. Yeah. So the area of this rectangle, area of the parallelogram, the same. Yeah. yeah. I'm just sliding this triangle over to make a rectangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So area is base times height, or is it half of that, or a third of that? Or mm -hmm. No. It's just base times height. Cool. So, like, what if we're like, Never mind. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Sound like you have something to say? No, I'm good. 
So for parallelograms, base times height. When you come along a parallelogram later, do you think you could just like replay that in your mind and say, I just take that old piece, move it over there. If I move that piece over there, what have I made? Uh, trying to go out, rectangle. A rectangle, I made a rectangle. I took this piece, I filled in this little gap. It fits perfectly, right? Because all the angles are the same, those two sides are parallel, this kind of stuff. And so I made a rectangle. That rectangle and parallelogram must have the same area because I made the rectangle with the pieces from the parallelogram. It's not too much, it's not too little, it's not twice as much like the triangle because the first thing we do with the triangle is make a copy of it, which means like, okay, now we have too much. Okay. Here, the parallelogram is everything you need to make that rectangle. Okay. But, uh, trapezoid. Using those ideas, this is what I want you to do for homework. I want you to take a trapezoid. Now, what you need to know about a trapezoid is that all a trapezoid is, two sides are parallel. This and this are parallel. Okay? They don't have to be the same length. These two sides, here and here, they don't have to be the same length. Just two sides are parallel. So let me show you like a, a crazy looking parallelogram, just so you understand. Like, it's not a parallelogram, a trapezoid. That's a trapezoid. Okay. So you think that has no two sides. Side. What's that? Sides are equal, no sides have to be equal. No sides have to be equal. Okay? Just two sides are parallel. That's all it takes to make a trapezoid. So that's what we have to make to make it. I want you to take this, copy it if you want, you know, copy and paste, spin, cut, slice, move, whatever, to figure out a way with the things that you can measure. You can measure this length, you can measure this length, you can measure the height. Okay? How do I take those those measurements and you know somehow make a rectangle out of it and turn it into base times height? Okay. All right. Challenge to you. Uh, yeah. Have a good day. All right. All right.